Can you just give me a, a, a quick over, overview of what is going on in the last, what, what has been happening in the last 18 months and the bigger picture? Um, okay, well, there's a lot of, that's a very broad question. Sorry. There's a lot of ways uh, to answer that. No, it's fine. Um, I would say that basically what we're seeing, you know, we're seeing this, this pivot from COVID to climate change, but I think ultimately the quote unquote solutions to both are going to remain consistent. And that speaks to the overall um, broader picture of why this has been happening the past year and a half or so, why it's going to continue to happen, even if the justification uh, fed to the public to justify these measures may shift as it is now from COVID to climate change, the quote unquote solutions are going to be the same. And, and ultimately um, what those quote unquote solutions are is, is this push to uh, digitalize uh, every sector of the economy. And part of this push that um, is, is generally called the fourth industrial revolution, um, but ties into a lot of other things, including uh, global governance, a new baking system um, and, and things of that nature. But all of that essentially runs on a very different type of infrastructure uh, that did not exist before uh, COVID-19, but was being actively planned and talked about by a lot of the, um, I guess you could say, uh, movers and shakers of the elite uh, that, that have, uh, you know, we, we've seen some of their faces more prominently. Um, Bill Gates being an obvious one that I think uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with, but there's a lot more. Um, but you know, this was also being gamed out, at least in the US, um, uh, mostly by um, sort of this conglomeration of uh, Silicon Valley oligarchs um, and uh, the military and intelligence communities in 2019 uh, that were basically framing this to the national security community of the US of this need to digitalize or we will uh, lose to China. We will lose market and economic hegemony to China if we don't uh, implement uh, digital IDs, uh, increased biometric surveillance, self-driving cars, um, and, and all of these other uh, technologies that sort of fall under this fourth industrial uh, revolution umbrella. <laughs> but what they actually also say, uh, said in, the, in their own documents is we can, um, you know, we have to do this to beat China. We have to, you know, become them to beat them. Uh, or we can, you know, build this uh, authoritarian techno-fascist hellscape together. How great, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, yes, that's a good point. Let me pause you there because because you you raised something which I I've noticed in the last few years. I used to be an avid consumer of the newspapers and stuff, and I used to be I used to believe this stuff, and I um, some of the stories which I now I now look at and go what. Well, why do they expect us to believe that? You know, for example, the number of stories telling me that eating insects are the new thing. It's going to be the new normal and, and it's something <laughs> we should welcome yeah. and get excited about. And you, and you saw even on the features pages of newspapers, people going to a sort of an insect restaurant to try out these crazy things. And it was marketed as, as something fun that we could all, all learn to enjoy. Or, or 5G. I No one has ever ever shown me a reason why any normal person would want 5g and yet the number of stories we're told um we, we read saying that you know uh, a growing economy needs this new technology for blah blah for reasons it's never explained central bank digital currencies we had our um uh chancellor rishi sunak he made a video mm -hmm. the other day saying and this is gonna yes, make I your saw. money like really extra safe Nobody, nobody is looking at their <laughs> their, their pound, yeah. pound, their ten pound notes and thinking, "I wish there were a, a digital currency to replace this." I mean, but they take us for fools, and actually, we are fools mostly for believing this stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of different um, uh, things to talk about that you just brought up, but you know, in terms of central bank digital currencies, I recently did a a podcast on this, and it I heard is, it. Um, it's good. Hardly, I, I the, the, basically the the sales pitch is essentially that it's digital money, uh, and as I understand it, the the Rishi Sunak video attempted to uh, perpetuate that myth. Uh, but if you look at people like the um, the head of the Bank of International Settlements, uh, Augustine Carsons. Um, he, really he basically guy. says, 
yeah he's a yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's kind of funny here here in chile i was trying to explain this to someone and i was like he's really enormous and um you know he, you don't really realize how enormous he is until you actually watch his video um or, or see a picture of him he's uh definitely the central banker central banker uh, <laughs> uh if you wanted to you know uh i sort of see him as a batman villain type guy but basically yeah. in this one video that was uh clipped by um the Solari Report, um, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz and, and, and John Titus. Uh, well, I think John Titus was the one that clipped the video. Um, he essentially says this is about control and central bank digital currencies is, a, a, is going to give them the technology to enforce new levels of control over, over people's finances and also financial surveillance that had previously uh, not been possible. Yeah. Uh, for, for central uh, bankers and central planners, essentially. So that's really not digital money. And, and, and you know, um, <clears throat> there, there's a broader agenda here, the digital ID, the, the uh, digitalization infrastructure I alluded to earlier, all of that essentially runs off of what they are marketing now as a vaccine passport. But the way that infrastructure is set up is to be a digital um, biometric ID tied to your medical records and, and vaccination history, but it, eventually it'll be all your medical records and also your, your finances, your central bank digital currency wallet. And uh, it makes them quite, it makes it quite easy for uh, the state to essentially deperson you by cutting access off of uh, through that centralized digital ID system, cutting off your access to being able to participate in, in the economy or receive health care um, or really even uh, receive government services really uh, exist at all in, in society. Yeah. Um, and that's really where this is uh, going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so CBDCs, if, if they get away with it, if they introduce them, if this becomes our only medium of exchange and um, uh, the only thing we're paid in, it will be game over for all our freedoms, everything. It'll be it'll be worse than, than life in the most totalitarian regime there's ever been because they'll be able to decide how you spend your money, whether you can spend it near, you know, within 10 miles of your home or further away, whether you're allowed to buy pizza and cigarettes or whether you've been a naughty boy or girl and you can't do that. Everything, that they'll control everything. And this is known. People like you are making podcasts about this. People like me are making podcasts out this. The information is out there. And yet, if you go into the mainstream media, for example, if you look at the, the Daily Telegraph, you know, sort of supposedly conservative broadsheet newspaper, uh, you go to their business section and you read an article on, on CBDCs. And in vain, do you look for any criticism of this. It, it, it's, it's just like, oh, the Bank of England has announced this. The, the Chancellor's announced this, this, this new thing. We are sleepwalking, are we not, into absolute disaster? Why is nobody yeah. talking about this stuff? Um, so why no one's talking about it in the mainstream media, I think more often than not has to do with the problems that have been uh, evident in mainstream media for quite some time, a lot of which has to do with funding or uh, concern about losing access uh, to uh, certain people that they want to interview, um, you know, th 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 there's a whole list of factors there that uh, precede uh, current events to a considerable degree that have only really been exacerbated. Um, and also, you know, the extreme, uh, I would argue, a crisis of also self-censorship, especially in the COVID era, has sort of set in that people don't want to uh, be forced out of their jobs if they uh, are deemed a naughty conspiracy theorists, among other things, um, yes. in, in the current climate. So I think there's a host of uh, reasons as to why it's not being covered um, in the mainstream media. Personally, I find it more complexing why more people in independent media that were very willing to challenge uh, government or corporate or mainstream uh, narratives uh, prior to COVID-19. Uh, even now, uh, seeing this, this stuff that doesn't have anything to do with pandemic or public health or whatever, um, are either uh, completely ignoring it or tacitly supporting it um, in, in one way or another. Which Is that I right? Find, uh, quite, uh, the, 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 you're talking about uh, people, people like us are, are, are failing to do their job. I mean, not, not literally you and me. Obviously. Well, uh, so there was, the, yeah. The, so there's a class of uh, of people, uh, independent media content uh, creators and, and media outlets that um, continue to act like we're living in 2019, um, <laughs> you know, and are, are reporting on the same stuff they were reporting on uh, before COVID, either completely ignoring um, a lot of the issues that that we have raised um, that are existential 
<laughs> crises uh, to our very societies. Yes. They um, are essentially ignoring them like mainstream media is. And mainstream media is doing so for the reasons that these people, independent media, were criticizing them for before, but they've uh, chosen to engage in the same type of behavior. So I do find that kind of um, perplex, more perplexing, I, yeah. guess, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a complete... But, um, as you say, it is existential. I mean, literally, it is existential. The, the future of our civilization, of everything that we've evolved to do over the years, I, I'm not sure that I believe in the kind of the, the, the liberal narrative that, that we've been, you know, the progressive narrative that we've been, been getting more and more sophisticated and better, um, and we've reached the end of history. I think that's just complete, complete bollocks. Um, but nevertheless, you would have thought that we could agree that actually human beings are you know are not useless eaters we're not we don't deserve to be treated like cattle we deserve we all deserve to have a better life for our children and so on and we all deserve to have our the possibility of our dreams being fulfilled and instead we seem to be going towards um a very dark period and nobody's talking about it apart from a few freaks like you and me um yeah i mean it, it it can be disheartening uh i think there are some people talking about it uh though um uh beyond um us right um it, the problem is too that we're dealing with very unprecedented uh censorship and the fact that most people's media consumption um has moved online and that voices raising these issues and, and criticizing them um, are pretty much entirely censored from television and print so we only really exist online um, yeah. in that sense and the censorship there has gotten progressively worse um, in the last year and a half so maybe there's there's you know uh, very reasonable people making very uh, good reasoned arguments but you know they didn't start doing that until this crazy censorship period and how are they going to build an audience mm. uh, for example right and I and that's why I think um, in talking about solutions, so much of this comes down to uh, building local networks and not being so dependent on the online realm uh, for all of this, because ultimately the online realm is where they're seeking to entrap us all and that they're seeking to, to control um, even more. Um, so some of the uh, work that I've done recently over the course of this year, I, I had an article um, focusing, well, I'm sure you've probably heard of the cyber polygon exercise concerns about uh, blackouts and, and things yeah, like yeah. that, the, the, the power grid and what have you. Um, right. So a lot of that goes back to this World Economic Forum uh, partnership against cybercrime that includes the governments of the UK, Israel and the United States um, and also the biggest corporations of Silicon Valley and um, the biggest banks in the world, essentially Wall Street banks. So ultimately what this boils down to and if you want the, the details of this, I would refer you to uh, that rather uh, lengthy article um, <clears throat> laying this all out, but essentially it's about uh, implementing a policy that it was uh, attempted in the US under the Obama administration, uh, the driver's license for the internet, that's how they called it. Mm. Um, or how they referred to it. And it was uh, pitched later on in places like Australia and the European Union as a driver's license for social media. And interesting in the recent stabbing of the, the Tory MP in the UK, this was resurrected as a quote unquote solution, uh, having to have a government ID being connected to uh, your social media presence. But this is a very long standing agenda. And it doesn't start with social media. The idea is to have it, your internet access completely tied to the same digital ID infrastructure uh, that I briefly mentioned uh, earlier, because then they can know exactly what websites and information you are accessing online. They can prevent you from accessing certain pages. And um, if you're naughty, um, <laughs> they cut it off entirely. You don't have access uh, to the internet. Um, yes. So that's essentially where a lot of this is, is going and it will be uh, more severe with time, but it, I was very interested. It was interesting to see that immediately pitched as the solution to that um, recent event in the United yeah, Kingdom. 